So what else has been going on in the shop? Well, as you might see on my uh, work bee here, I've stripped down one side of the bed. Uh, I This was obviously all all wood with a uh, fully covered with a wasteboard, but I've been doing a lot of branding irons um, that you will see on my Instagram or Facebook page lately. And it wasn't working too well with the vise I was using. So, see this I had this vice that was um, it's basically a pillar drill vice um, I was using this for mounting the brass on the bed and machining the brass they're not very accurate they're not great uh, the way they the way they often work is the back the back drawer will push the material up and you, it won't sit fully level it's not too bad on simple jobs that don't need to be accurate, but the brand and irons do need to be accurate. So this just wasn't working for me. I had it mount I had it mounted originally on the bed like this. And that's how I was doing my brand and irons. I wasn't happy with that, so finally decided as much as I didn't want to spend any money, I would upgrade to a machine vice. Basically a milling machine vice. Still not an overly expensive one, it's an RG Tools one off of eBay. Now, uh, 45 pounds, I think this was. It's really good for 45 pounds. Um, much more level now, bolts up nice, got a nice handle you can take off when you're not using it. Uh, swivels, the whole thing can swivel on the base. Uh, really happy with this one so far. So, that's mounted directly to the table and um, it also allows me a bit more room now in the Z movement for machining. So that's been an upgrade that I've been working on and I've been using it now for the last three days with this on here and it's been working really well. And another move I decided I would do this, this week is I've obviously had this work be now for a year maybe. Um, when I bought the work be, I bought it with this pretty smart dust shoe to go on the bottom uh, for the extraction. Since I've had it, I've never actually fitted extraction to this machine. Um, I just basically hoover it up after using it or while I'm using it. But within two weeks of having the work bee, I got fed up with the palm router, trim router spindle. Um, it was like being at the front row of a Slayer concert while trying to concentrate. Now. That's all well and good, I've got no problems with that, but it was going to annoy the neighbours, I think. Um, and it's, it was certainly deafening me, even with ear defenders on. You know, to have it running on a long run, I, I just I couldn't stand it. And I didn't like the fact that you couldn't have, you could only have one size tool. So, since upgrading to this water cooled spindle, which I did within... I bought it within about the first month of owning the work bee. Um, this is a 1.5 kilowatt water cooled spindle. Um, comes with ER11 collets and that just offers so many more options. You, you've got I think 0.5 to 7 mil collets so you can fit a whole range of tools in here now and it's been great. The water cooled spindle I would, I would recommend a water cord spindle to anybody who's going to buy a work bee or a CNC router like this. I, I wouldn't go down the route of a trim router. They're, they're too noisy. They're not made to run for long periods. The brushes will burn out. You have to replace the brushes in them. Um, this one is so much quieter. I mean, I, I will just show you at full, uh, full speed. That's the water cord spindle. No editing on the noise. That's the water cooled spindle running at full RPM and you would never be able to do that on a palm router. You wouldn't even be able to hear me if I had the palm router on. So these dust shoes weren't cheap um, when I bought the machine. It wasn't cheap. In fact now I look at the price I'm surprised I bought it. But it's never been able to fit because the palm router I think was about a 60 or 65 mil diameter circle cut out this is about just over 80 so yesterday as you can see you might be able to see that on the bed there I set this up here 
six mil carbide cutter and I opened up the circle so now I can finally it needs just to loosen off it will go up onto the spindle like that will fit up on the spindle and we can take the dust shoe so now I can where needed have some extraction connected up to this I loop it up to the ceiling again and I can use that to, to take away the dust especially MDF nasty stuff MDF with the dust I don't love having a dust shoe on there because you can't see a thing I can't see my cutter but it is good to keep for, it's good for your lungs good for your health and good I do like a tidy workshop so it is good to um, extract anything you can keep it out the air so that was another job I've done this week modified that will now fit on there and I will fit that probably over the next couple of days so I can use that so that's just some more little projects I've been up to this week um, I've obviously been making a fair few branding irons I will just get a couple of them to show you what which ones I've done this week Here's a couple, uh, couple I've been working on. So we've got one for a guy, Rick's Woodwork. He wanted a brand and iron. Wanted it fairly simple, just saying Rick's Woodwork. So that is 25 mil high, 60 mil wide, um, and that on brand that brands really nicely. Um, you can see that on there. Heat that up with your blowtorch till it's a nice orangey colour and that brands nicely that was one I done yesterday and then we've got another one here which is see the axes it's red beards woodcraft came out nice there's a technique you need to learn when using these branding irons depending if, depending which one you have if you if you've got a simple one like this um, two lines of text you can just heat it up straight down push down on the job and it, it will come out fine once you start going up to the bigger size this is a 50 by 50 mil you've got the big logo at the top so it's got a lot of surface area that's going to make contact with the material and then you've got this much smaller writing at the bottom so you have to kind of learn a technique of I find what works best is once you've not got it up to temperature is to apply a bit more pressure to the back where the writing is and then push it down onto the logo because the logo will brand very easy it, it will come out a lot easier than the text will so if you push down onto the writing first to get that nicely bedded on the material and then rotate up to the logo and then occasionally on, on my own logo that I use the smelly cat logo I also rock it to the left and then rock it to the right because on my own logo I have to make sure the whiskers come out and at the top of my logo I have to make sure the little smelly cat signs come out so just depending on, on which brand and iron it is to, you might need to slightly alter how you, how you apply it to, to the job um, but that's another two that I've done this week if, if you're interested in a brand and iron get in contact uh, get in contact with me through Instagram or through Facebook page um, you can see some others that I've done on the uh, Instagram page there's been a few just about in a moment to uh, set up for another one and uh, yeah so I've been doing a fair few of these brands and irons recently so if you want to brand your work get in touch and uh, that's what's been going on with the uh, CNC